Hello everyone, welcome to GoVM Lab. In this lecture, we are going to have comparative study between NSXV and NSXT. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about top 10 key differences between NSXV versus NSXT product and we'll see that how these two products have a different architecture and how NSXT has an improvised version of NSXV product. So now with that, let's get started. Now, the very first point, if you do see that, it's about hypervisor support. So now if you're aware about NSXV product, you know that NSXV itself stands for NSX for vSphere. What does that mean? It means that NSXV product was only supporting VMware ESXi hypervisor and this NSXV product was only compatible with the VMware vSphere environment. But NSXT not only supports VMware ESXi hypervisor, but it also has a support for KVM hypervisor. And that is the reason NSXT supports wide range of operating systems such as RHEL, Ubuntu, CentOS, and all the other flavors. Not only that, NSXT also have a support for Kubernetes and container ecosystem, which was not there in the NSXV environment. NSXV was purely designed for VMware vSphere environment, where NSXT has a larger ecosystem where it supports ESXi hypervisor, KVM hypervisor, containers and support for Kubernetes as well. And not only that, NSXT also has a support for public cloud workloads such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. I'm sure you might have heard about products like VMware Cloud on AWS, Azure VMware Solution, Google Cloud VMware Engine, Oracle Cloud on VMware, IBM Cloud on VMware, all these hybrid cloud solutions are tightly integrated with the NSXT. NSXT is the backbone of all these hybrid cloud offering what VMware is providing. So now that's the one of the major difference between NSXV and NSXT. Now let's move on to the next point. The next point about NSX manager accessibility. Now what does that mean? Now if you're familiar with the NSXV environment, you would be knowing that NSXV can only be managed with our vCenter server. So if you do see that, that's our vCenter server. And once we click on menu, we used to see a plugin named as networking and security. So once you click on that networking and security plugin, that's where it will navigate you to the NSX dedicated dashboard page. So the point what I'm trying to mention it here that to manage the NSX v networking and security, we need to have a vCenter server and we can only manage the entire networking and security of NSX v environment using vCenter server interface. So we had a dependency on the vCenter server because NSX v is going to get installed as a in plugin. But now if you look at the NSX T, when we install NSX T manager, we get a unique URL. Now, once you take that URL and put it into the browser, it will take us to the dedicated dashboard of NSXT manager. And what you see in the diagram, that's the dedicated dashboard of NSXT manager, which means that to manage the NSXT networking and security, there is no need of vCenter server to be there. We can manage the entire NSXT networking and security independent of vCenter server. So that's the another major architectural difference between NSXV and the NSXT. Let's move on to the third point. Now the third point, it says that vCenter server dependency, like in continuation to the, the previous point, what we have discussed that NSXV was tightly integrated with the vCenter server. And if you remember, whenever we used to install NSXV manager, we need to have one to one mapping between NSXV and vCenter server. We need to register NSXV manager to the vCenter server. And that's where there was always a one-to-one -one mapping between NSXV manager and the vCenter server. On the other hand, NSXT, if you do see that, first of all, it's not mandatory to add the vCenter server to the NSXT environment. You can manage the entire NSXT networking and security without adding vCenter server to the NSXT manager. But if you already have a vSphere environment running in your infrastructure and you want to manage the, you want to simplify the management of your NSXT environment, that's where there's a concept of compute manager. So NSXT gives us a concept of compute manager where we can add vCenter server as a compute manager to our NSXT infrastructure. And not only that, if you do see that there's a one to many mapping in the NSXT infrastructure. So if in the NSXV, it always one-to-one -one mapping between NSXV manager and NSXT manager. 
Whereas in the NSXT, it's one to many mapping where multiple vCenter server can be added to a single NSXT manager. And if you do see that, the compute manager type always remains the vCenter server. So that's another added advantage of NSXT manager where you don't need to have a multiple NSX manager instances running. If you have a multi-site deployment, you can manage all this multi-site deployment with just one instance of NSXT manager and by adding all these vCenter server of multiple site to that NSXT manager. So that's another architectural differences. What do we see between NSXV and NSXT from the vCenter server perspective? Now let's move on to the fourth point. If you do see that the fourth point says that NSX manager and controller. So if you remember in the NSXV world, we always used to have a one instance of NSX manager and controller used to get deployed as, as a three node cluster. What does that mean? It means that in NSXV, the controllers get deployed as a three node cluster, which is giving us a high availability for the control plane. But NSXV manager was a single instance what used to get deployed in the NSXV manager. And that is the reason single instance of NSXV manager used to be a bottleneck or single point of failure. And that's where as a NSX admin, we need to use third party backup solutions for backing up our NSXV manager and making our management plane highly available. If you look at the NSXT, what NSXT architecture has done, the, one of the major change in the architecture that NSX manager and NSX controller, they both reside in a single appliance VM. What does that mean? In the NSXV, NSX manager used to be a different VM, NSX controller used to be a different VM. But in the NSXT, what VMware did, they just deployed one appliance VM and that VM would be running the instance of NSX V manager as well as the NSX controller. And that appliance is used to call as unified appliance. So now what VMware has done that they have simplified the implementation of NSX manager and the controller. And both of these management and control plane resides in a single appliance VM. And this particular appliance VM gets deployed as a three node cluster. So if you do see that, these appliance VM gets deployed as a three node cluster, which not only protect our NSX controller, but now it gives us a high availability at the NSX manager level also, which was not there in the NSX V architecture. And that's one of the major difference. What do we see in the NSXT architecture, which really simplifies the deployment of NSXT manager and make not only controllers, but also our management plane or NSX manager also highly available. Now let's move on to the fifth point. The fifth point, what do we have it is overlay protocol. NSXV was completely based on VXLAN protocol. All the switching, whatever used to happen in the NSXV environment, it was completely based on VXLAN protocol, where in the NSXT, VMware actually implemented Geneve protocol for all the overlay switching. Now, why Geneve protocol instead of VXLAN? Because Geneve protocol gives us a lot more flexibilities, a lot more capabilities than VXLAN protocol in terms of TLVs. And that is the reason if you do see that the bare minimum requirement for the VXLAN in the NSXV environment was MTU has to be configured minimum to 1600 bytes. What does that mean? It means that the bare minimum MTU has to be configured on the physical infrastructure is 1600 bytes to accommodate VXLAN packets, but in the NSXT, because we use Geneve protocol and Geneve protocol has additional TLVs fields, which gives us a lot of capabilities to the vendors for additional customized information. And that's where the recommendation by VMware is that in the NSXT environment, you should have minimum MTU configured as 1700 bytes. And the recommendation is always try to keep MTU if possible up to 9000. So now that's the difference between NSXV and NSXT, where NSXV was based on VXLAN protocol, where NSXT is completely based on Geneva protocol, and Geneva protocol is just an extension of VXLAN protocol. Now, let's move on to the next point. The next point is NSX overlay switching. So we were just discussing about VXLAN protocol, and if you remember, if you have this ESXi hypervisor and there are two VMs which are running on top of this ESXi hypervisor, and if these two VMs wants to talk to each other, obviously we need to have a layer two switch in place. In the NSXV environment, all the layer two switching capabilities or overlay switching capabilities is provided by our traditional VDS switch. So NSXV networking was completely based on vSphere distributed switch. But now in the NSXT and the early release of NSXT, if you do see that VMware came up with 
a new switch called NVDS. That's an NSX managed distributed switch. All the ESXi hypervisor was having NVDS as a switching plane to take care of the packet forwarding and filtering. But now from 7.0 onwards, VMware also has a support for VDS. So now if you do see that current version of NSXT has a support for NVDS as well as VDS for overlay switching. And you also have a way of migrating all of your NVDS workloads to VDS workloads. Similarly, when we talk about the KVM hypervisor, obviously we can't have a VDS or NVDS in our KVM hypervisor because that's a that's a proprietary switch of VMware and that's where in the KVM hypervisor there is implementation of OVS. So open virtual switch is responsible for overlay switching in the NSXT environment for the KVM based hypervisor. So just to conclude here that in the NSXT we had a two different uh, switching plane. The one is NVDS or VDS for all our ESXi based hypervisor environment and for the KVM based hypervisor environment we have an open virtual switch so called OVS. Now let's move on to the next topic. The next topic what we have it is NSX routing architecture. So if you do see that that's one of the major change. What do we see in the architecture of NSX V and NSX T? Now NSX V if you do see that there was only one tier routing architecture was there in the NSX V. If you look at this particular diagram we used to have something called ESG at services gateway and that at services gateway was responsible for doing the peering with the external physical router and taking care of our north south workflows and then we used to have this DLR which is called distributed logical router and that DLR was responsible for east west flows. Now if you do see that it was a one tier routing architecture what we used to have it and because of this one tier routing architecture the multi tenancy was one of the the challenging implementation in the NSXV environment. Now in the NSXT, if you do see that NSXT introduced uh, a new routing architecture called two tier routing architecture. And that's where if you do see in this diagram, there are two router come into the picture. The first router, what do we call it as tier zero router and that tier zero router do the route peering with the external physical router and enables the north south communication. And the other hand, we have a something called tier one router and that tier one router is actually connected to our NSX workloads and it enables east west flows between our NSX segments. So now if you do see that that's a two tier routing architecture what we have seen in the NSXT environment and because of this two tier routing architecture NSXT gives us multi tenant capabilities where this tier zero router can be considered as a infrastructure router and these tier one router can be considered as a tenant router. So that's a, one of the major change. What do we see in the NSX V and NSXT routing architecture? Now let's move on to the next topic. The next point. What do we have? It is NSX routing architecture in continuation to the previous topic. What we have seen that. So in the NSX V, if you do see that we used to have ESG and DLR. Now ESG stands for at services gateway, which is used to be our perimeter gateway and it giving us bunch of networking services like VPN, load balancer, NAT, firewall, etc. And that's what we used to call it like a Swiss knife army. And we used to have the other VM called DLR control VM or that DLR control VM used to do the route peering with the at services gateway. And that's how it used to enable the communication between our NSX workloads. So now in the NSX V architecture, we had a component ESG and DLR. ESG is responsible for north south routing, whereas distributed logical router sitting on every single ESXi host is responsible for east west flows. In the NSXT, if you do see that there is no concept of edge services gateway, there is no concept of DLR control VM at all. NSXT introduced a new construct like virtual routing functions. So every logical router if you do see that has a two different function. The first function is called DR and the second function is called SR. So DR stands for distributed router responsible for east west routing in the logical space whereas SR stands for service router and this service router is responsible for all the stateful and centralized services like NAT, BGP, firewall, VPN and load balancer. So that's the major difference between NSXV and NSXT routing architecture where now we have a new virtual routing functions like 
SR and DR and every logical router would be running these two component taking care of east west and north south services. Now let's move on to the next topic. The next point says that NSX edge deployment. So if you are aware about the NSX V deployment as we have discussed in the previous point, if you do see that in the NSX V environment, ESG so called edge services gateway or perimeter gateway used to get deployed as a virtual appliance on our ESXi hypervisor. Similarly, we used to deploy DLR control VM to do the route pairing with our edge services gateway and to enable end to end north south communication and that's where these two component used to get deployed as a virtual appliance on our ESXi hypervisor. But on the NSXT environment, if you do see that there is no concept of edge services gateway, there is no concept of DLR control VM. Now in edge services, now in NSXT, VMware introduced a concept of edge nodes and edge cluster. So if you do see that this is our edge node one and this is our edge node two. Now edge node can be considered as a one placeholder which is having a bunch of resources and this edge nodes are responsible for hosting our tier zero and tier one functions. So whatever functions we talked about it, SR function, DR function. So all these functions would be residing on one of our edge node and edge node is responsible for giving all the required resources to these virtual routing functions which are responsible for NSXT routing. And we deploy these edge node as a edge cluster for high availability. So as you do see that these edge nodes get deployed in a edge cluster to give us high availability and fault tolerance. So that's another difference. What do we see in the NSX V and NSXT deployment where NSXT has a concept of edge nodes and edge cluster and this edge node gets deployed either as a virtual appliance or we can deploy this edge node as a bare metal system as well. Now let's move on to the, the last point. The last point talks about NSX use cases. So as you could see that NSX V environment was best suited for on-prem workloads which are completely based on vSphere based environment. So as you could see that NSX V product was best suited for vSphere based environment where customer is only concerned about ESXi based hypervisor and he's really not uh, thinking about moving towards the public clouds platform or maybe containers Kubernetes or KVM based hypervisor. Whereas if you look at the NSXT, NSXT has a broader ecosystem. NSXT supports any hypervisor whether it's ESXi or KVM it supports heterogeneous endpoints like containers, bare metal and virtual machine and last but not least NSXT supports multiple clouds such as AWS, Azure, Google, IBM, Oracle etc. So now it clearly tells us that NSXT is the next generation of networking and security platform and it has a, a wider support for heterogeneous environment and that is the reason NSXT gives us a lot more capabilities as compared to NSXV and it overcome all the challenges what we used to face in the NSXV architecture. So now this concludes our lecture on NSXV versus NSXT comparison where we try to have a understanding between NSX V architecture and NSX T architecture. We really hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thanks for your time. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.